Mr. The Honourable Shane yeah. Mallow. Mr. Deputy President. Obviously, food night tonight, Mr. President. Uh, in 2005, this House passed into law an amendment to the Civil Liabilities Act, which allowed the food industry to donate surplus food without fear or liabilities. This would drastically alter, in a fundamentally positive way, the course of the food cycles in this state. With this change in legislation, a company founded by social entrepreneur Ronnie Kahn, K -A -H -N, called Oz Harvest and supported by hundreds of, hundreds of great volunteers, emerged to engage in what is now a highly successful charitable business, collecting and redistributing waste food that would otherwise end up in landfill. They now supply more than 500 charities across all major Australian cities who heavily depend on Oz Harvest's collection of unspoiled food from supermarkets, farmers and commercial food outlets such as cafes and restaurants to feed society's most vulnerable. The, st the statistics are astonishing. Australia produces enough food to feed approximately 60 million people, yet 2 million Australians still rely on food relief every year. Three years ago, it was estimated that businesses in New South Wales sent 40 so 400,000 tonnes of food waste to landfill each year, 75% of, of which never made it to a customer's plate. Uh, Mr Pre uh, Deputy President, New South Wales will uh, really, realistically never be a zero waste society, but it won't be for want of trying in this state. With charities like Oz Harvest working together with government programs like Love, Hate, Food, Hate, Waste, Love, sorry, Love, Food, Hate, Waste, there are significant inroads being made in regards to this global food supply challenge. The latest figures from the most comprehensive business waste order ever undertaken indicate that fi that figure has dropped to 170,000 tonnes, more than 50 per cent reduction through the education and awareness programs. <clears throat> In addition to the Love, Food, Hate, Waste program and its ongoing cooperation with Oz Harvest, the New South Wales Government is supporting food donation services by providing funding for equipment like refrigeration, vans, freezers uh, to help the not-for-profit organisations across New South Wales to expand services or introduce new ones where they don't currently exist. Unavoidable food waste like veggie scraps and plate waste is also being collected and recycled into compost rather than being put into landfill. Uh, in New South Wales, we're investing $43 million over five years in infrastructure to, to increase our capacity to produce what, that extra waste that is collected, to reduce that waste. Most recently, on the 9th of September, Oz Harvest received a grant for funding for a new van and driver to service the northern beaches. The van will allow Oz Harvest to substantially increase the amount of surplus food collected and redistributed to charitable agencies uh, for people in need and within council regions of Mossman, Manly, Warringah, Pittwater, North Sydney, Lane Cove, Willoughby and Coringai. This is of course a lot more, there is of course a lot more to this renewed, renewed interest in what I like to call the food cycle. There's a great number of community gardens sprouting up all around Sydney and in suburbs as nearby as Alexandria, in fact not far from where I live, there's a, there was a fairly overgrown patch of grass outside or part of the Alexandria Park School and Community Centre, which is now a space for the community to come together and enjoy and grow their own food. It was hard work to get the garden to grow, but a retired couple living in the, in the area went to great lengths for their local community, mulching, planting vegetables and creating a frog pond and painting a mural with the school children. As our city moves to more denser modes of urban living, places like the Alexandria Park Community <coughs> Garden Will be, a, will be vital to providing not just a place to grow veggies, but a place which can bring communities together and, and into shared spaces and open, open space. As well as this, these gardens reduce household waste through composting and give people the opportunity to get their hands dirty and learn valuable skills and into social skills. And it's not just the hip inner city people that are embracing what is fast becoming a movement towards localised community-based food sources. Now, I'm a keen gardener and so I was also interested to read recently about suburban Sydney households taking up permaculture as a means of dealing with living, the, high, the, the rising living costs and in doing so developing an alternative to shopping at the large supermarket chains but also avoiding wasteful processes involving some commercial agricultural practices. An article which appeared in the Sydney Morning Herald on the 17th of April described the backyard of Linda and Nevin Sweeney who produced about 80 per cent of their food in the Sydney suburb of St Clair. There is clearly a, quite, a, a, quite an exciting revolution going on in the colony culture in the Greater Sydney. Our attitude to food is changing, not just with regards to how it tastes, but how it's sourced and grown and disposed of. We must continue to strive to reduce waste and support those in need when it comes to uh, supplying food. Supporting organisations, uh, supporting organisations and initiatives like Oz Harvest and Community Gardens is a very big part of the New South Wales Government's approach to this issue, and it's proving highly successful. <laughs>